Zane Ball. All right, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, there's quite a lot of energy at the, the show this year. Um, and I know I'm the last talk before lunch, so we'll, we'll stay on time. Um, you know, it's really hard to come to an event like this and not think about the last two years and this pandemic. And I, I think the, the degree to which the world relies on the infrastructure that the companies and people represented here at OCP and in this industry you know, impacted the world during this time was, was really profound. And I, I'm very proud of my little piece of it. I, I hope everyone in the room is, is proud of the piece that you guys played as well, because we let the world keep going, educating kids, keeping the economy running, and that's super important. And it also highlights the degree to which I think the economy has become digitized and the amount of opportunity that's opened up for us but the opportunities for us and the responsibilities that go with that have to be reckoned with. Uh, there's some facts here that I, I just kind of keep toying in my head and how important it is to just think about the global economy is 60% digitized even today. You know, we have one and a half billion CPU cores in operation today, but we will have five billion by 2025. The rate of expansion is profound. And this last data point is one that I think is very sobering. To realize that up to 20% of electricity utilization will be consumed by data centers by 2030, depending on what we do. Um, I think it's fair to say that the cloud and the digital world that we've built is no longer just a sector of the economy. We, we are the infrastructure for the economy. And so if we're going to deal with the problems that we have, there's really nobody but us. And I think at once that's sobering, but it's also exciting. And how in this industry do we solve these kind of problems? Well, we solve them together through standards, through open platforms and open standards. Intel has been investing in these areas for decades. Things like CXL, things like PCI Express, things like DPDK, OpenBMC, all kinds of open platform solutions. And that allows companies large and small, academics, governments, to innovate on top of our platforms and make them better. And the standards allow us to innovate on top of others' work and make them better. And because of those open platforms, we're able to accelerate. And that's how we're going to solve problems. And that's why OCP is such a key venue for us to come together and address the key challenges that face us. And there's lots of challenges, but I really wanted to draw your attention to three. And you've heard about some of these already uh, at this show. And the first one is sustainable. We're on a path to 5 billion CPU cores. That's one measure. How are we gonna do that sustainably, right? We have problems in terms of carbon emissions. We have problems in terms of e-waste and circularity that we need to address. And OCP is a great venue to work on these problems together. Second, as we move to these extremely large fleets, whether they're deployed a diversity of locations in the edge or they're concentrated in hyperscale data centers, we're managing fleets of compute that are on a scale way beyond what we've done in the past. And that scale is showing up as new problems, novel problems that we haven't encountered before and we need to attack them. And I'm gonna talk about an important one today. And then finally, something that OCP does really well and that Intel is very vested in, and that's advancing hardware standards, especially around modularity. If we're going to meet the needs of this 5 billion core world, we're gonna to need to build servers faster, we're gonna need to enable reuse, we're gonna to need to enable infrastructure that can last longer and be upgraded. So modularity is key, and so, we're gonna to talk today about a path forward in that regard. But first, let's talk about sustainability, a hot topic uh, this morning. Uh, Intel's been investing in sustainability for years and years and years. As a semiconductor manufacturer, we have key challenges like water usage, like electricity consumption, and we've been investing for a very long time in conservation. We've saved over 7 billion gallons of water we are 82% green power globally today with work to do to do even better. But like 
many companies, we can work on our own operations, but I think there's other problems that can only be solved by cooperation, by working together, by building standards that help us solve bigger problems. And one of those is e-waste. Uh, OCP has a circularity and life cycle work stream that we think is very important. Intel is contributing to it. And what we all have to realize is that we have to design with the end in mind. When we architect our infrastructure, when we come up with the designs for the servers and we build the supply chains of the future, we need to understand how that full circle of the life cycle is going to look so we can plan ahead for it. We can't just tell ourselves, we're going to ship massive amounts of infrastructure and one day we'll recycle it. It's, it's so much more than that. And there's a lot of work to be done here. So what sort of goals should we take on? Here's a few that I would offer up for us to think about. Number one, why can't we entertain less than 1% e-waste as a percent of data center bond? I think we really, when we think about the scale at which we're starting to operate, we have to have very aggressive goals because we're talking about a lot of physical infrastructure. Second, in the next 18 months, can we define standard measurements for CO2 and get the right kind of accounting in place so that we can tackle the problem? And that includes scope three emissions. And then finally, I think the biggest one, can we tackle an order of magnitude improvement in data center carbon emissions? Big, big challenges. And I think only by working together are we going to come up with solutions and a roadmap forward. OK, second, I want to talk about at scale operations. Uh, something I've learned in the last few years is when you build a large compute infrastructure and you bring to it super stable software and excellent telemetry, you start to learn new things about computers that we didn't know before, and we start to see some novel problems. And those problems are going to get bigger as time goes on and we need to address them. And scale problems have been around for a long time, and OCP and other venues, we've been addressing them. And you know, it starts with telemetry and Intel and others, we've made investments in telemetry. Devices have good capabilities, which are unleashed by open source projects like OpenBMC, by technologies like Redfish that allow us to begin to manage fleets at a large scale. We've also learned that if you want to have high reliability in a global infrastructure, you have to be able to do advanced debug remotely. If there's a server uh, 6,000 miles away that is rebooting a little bit more often than it should, you need to be able to remotely address the problem and remotely apply a patch or do advanced diagnostics. And we've enabled the capabilities to do that. So those have been important problems we've solved in the last three or four years. And these technologies are in various states of adoption. But there's a new problem, and we call it in-fleet diagnostics. One of the new problems that we've learned in this billion core era is that silicon is not always perfect. There are silicon defects. And while in the past, you could probably pretty much ignore it, today you can't ignore it anymore. And those defects might escape a, a manufacturing line, or maybe they even emerge over time. Google and Facebook have published papers in the last year outlining the challenges that this can have. It can cause a system uh, to become a little bit flaky. Maybe it reboots. Maybe it even can impact your data. So that's a profound concern that we have to take very seriously. And at Intel, we've been working hard on this problem, and we've produced a new tool that we call the Data Center Diagnostic Tool. And this has been available on our website for some time. Uh, you can download it today if you'd like, and it runs on any Intel Xeon processor. And it can find a defective CPU relatively quickly, and you can also deploy it at scale uh, in a background mode uh, to perform testing on idle resources over time. It's a good tool. And our customers are happy with it, and we're seeing improved fleet reliability as a result of its deployment. But we don't think we're done with this problem. And we think the larger the fleet size gets, the more sophisticated we're going to need to be to understand how to make silicon as reliable as, pro as possible. So I'm announcing today that we're opening a, a new open source project on GitHub. The link is also on the foil, called Open DC Diag. And so we're taking the software framework of the data center diagnostics tool. We're opening that up so that others can experiment with it, can add new tests, can do research, and we intend to partner with our customers. We intend to partner with academia in finding new and clever ways to address this problem, either more efficiently or more comprehensively. It's an exciting project and something that I think is going to become 
more and more important in the years ahead. Finally, I want to talk about modularity. And I kind of saved the best for last. I am so pumped up about the things we can do with our next generation uh, standards in hardware. So at Intel, we have been working for quite some time on a project that we call Project Blue Glacier. And Project Blue Glacier is a vision for how we standardize the server into common building blocks. And some of the work getting to this vision has already been done. Uh, there's a, there's has been DCSCM, now in its version two, which we've contributed to, which is a key component of the vision. There is the OCP NIC V3, which is a key component of the vision that we have worked for. So why is this important? So if you think about the way we develop servers today, a company like Intel designs a new chip, a new Xeon, and we design a platform around it. And that includes memory, that includes power integrity, that includes signal integrity, and then we do a ton of testing. The complexity of all the configurations that the industry may want to use is pretty staggering, and you have to test it comprehensively. So we do that, and then we provide design guides and samples to our customers, and you know what? They design their own. Maybe slightly different, maybe a variation on the theme, and then they gather all of those different memory combinations and power solutions, and they do the same thing. Again, and again, and again, and again, maybe 200 server designs around the industry in any given generation. Seems to me pretty wasteful. So the idea here is, what if we could define a hardware processor module that could do the work for all the configurations that we needed? Could we define a reusable compute block has the CPU and memory that could be deployed as easily into an edge server, as an enterprise server, as a hyperscale cloud server. And then my customer can adopt my design. I'm not saying they're not gonna do any testing at all, but the vast amount of validation and testing required could maybe be an order of magnitude less. We could ramp designs faster, and the infrastructure could be easily upgraded into the field. So I think it's an incredibly powerful idea the question is, can you solve all the technical problems, and can we get the industry to congeal around a solution? And so I have, um, well, I thought I had <laughs> a, a solution to show you on stage. Um, but maybe we can just deal with the graphic here. Um, the first evolution of this is a design we call Ruby Pass. And Ruby Pass is in our labs today, and it is, uh, uh, it is running. And you know, it, it's, it solves all of these problems of getting into an edge server, a hyperscale server, and an enterprise storage server. And so it uh, only has one flaw, and that we designed it before we completed the DCSCM v2 specification. And now we have DCSCM v2, and we're developing a new generation of, uh, of, the, of the design. So the next generation of this design is pictured here. Ah, we do have it. It was just hidden. I'm sorry about that. So this is the Ruby Pass design. And this is our DCSCM version 2 module. So between what we learned in Ruby Pass and what we've delivered with the DCSCM version 2, we're now able to take on the next generation that you see here. So it is our intent at Intel to take Project Blue Glacier and the engineering solutions that we have solved, working with our partners to lead the next generation of modular compute. You will be hearing more from us on this topic in coming months, and I think we're going to garner these huge benefits we can from a fully modularized server design going forward. So we've talked about problems, and we've talked about solutions. The solutions to getting to a 5 billion core world, getting to a sustainable path to 5 billion cores, is for us to work together building common standards 
common platforms and innovating on top of each other. That's going to involve new solutions for sustainability, like it's going to come out of the circularity work group. That's going to involve new tools and capabilities for managing large fleets of compute at scale, like DC Diag, and future versions that will come from the innovation of open DC Diag. And finally, the ability to ramp infrastructure faster, cheaper, with modular server designs. It's, I think, never been a more exciting time to be in this industry. Coming off of the pandemic, we've seen how important we are to the world, and we know how important we're going to be when we get to this next generation of 5 billion cores. It's going to take collaboration across the industry to get there, and I couldn't be more excited about it. So finally, thank you. We have a number of sessions that are going to address these topics in more detail. Have a great show, and it's great to be back here. Thank you.